So let's talk about installing the remote access service. Now, um, before I do the install installation, I want to show you something that we've done here, and I'm going to do a little prep work. So I'm going to click on configure this local server, and you'll see I have two network connections here. I've got Ethernet and local area network. And what I've done is I've added a second network card to this. So typically, if you're doing a remote access configuration, a remote access is going to give us VPN, direct access, a few other things like that that we can work with. Uh, the ability to do routing, uh, network address translation. So typically for that, we're going to want a multi-homed computer. So we're going to want a server that has more than one Ethernet adapter or network adapter. So I've gone ahead and done that. Now to simplify my life, I'm just going to, I'm going to click on one of these and this is going to open up my network connections. Now this is not strictly necessary, but it really helps when you're doing your configurations if you name your uh, Ethernet connection something useful. So I'm going to come over here. This is my new one, the Ethernet. I'm going to right click and I am going to rename that and I'm going to call this my Internet connection. And then for my local area network, that kind of makes sense already. So by renaming that, it doesn't actually make any difference as far as the operating system is concerned, but it's going to simplify my life when I go to do my configurations because I'm going to identify these by the name and so by knowing which one's internet, which one's local area network, or if I had, you know, three or four going ahead and giving them descriptive names as well. That just makes my life much, much easier. So you'll notice that it hasn't taken effect here. Anytime you make a change, the local server manager or your server manager is going to take a little while to update. You can force a refresh using this right here. And that will force a refresh and it will update anything that needs to be updated. Okay, now that I have my adapters named in a way that's going to make logical sense, I'm going to go to Manage and Add Roles and Features. And standard, what we always do, roller feature-based installation, yep, server, yep. And I'm going to choose my remote access. Now, in older versions of Windows, this was sometimes referred to as routing and remote access or something like that. And this is going to include several different pieces here. Direct access, which is IPv6 only. It's basically a, it's like a VPN, but it's like an always-on auto-connected VPN. So... It gives you some nice capabilities, but it's IPv6 only. We can also do standard VPN web application pro uh, proxy. You can see down here we can use it for routing, NAT. So lots of different things we can do for remote access. We can even do dial-up through remote access. So let's go ahead and click Next. I don't want to add any features. And then here, this gives me a little bit more of a breakdown of it. But then I'm going to choose what I want for role services. And this is where I kind of pick what I think this is going to be used for. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, pick, cancel that real quick so I can tell you what I'm picking, the direct access and VPN or RAS, the remote access service. I could also choose to do routing or the web application proxy. And over here, you'll see a description of all of them. So I'm going to say direct access and VPN. This tells me all the tools that I'll need to install for it. Say, yep, go ahead and add those features. Click Next. Now that has, you'll notice, added the web server role. So I'm going to click Next and then choose what I want for that. Now I don't have to worry because this has already picked the things that I need for it. So I'm fine with that. So I'm just going to click Next and Install. Now, while this is installing, I'm going to give you a couple of caveats here. The remote access service does give you some very interesting capabilities. You can use your server as a router. You can use it as a NAT device for direct connection to the Internet. You can use it for as a VPN server, uh, either site to site VPN or remote access VPNs. There are all of these very cool things you can do with it. And quite frankly, I'm not really a fan of any of them. So the reason I say that is because I don't want a Windows Server device functioning as a network router. For one thing, there's some severe limitations to it. For another, it wasn't really designed for that. 
I would rather use a dedicated router, dedicated piece of hardware, uh, router hardware that was designed from the ground up for that function. Same thing with it functioning as a firewall or as a VPN access, a VPN uh, server. I would much rather use that, use a firewall device with VPN capabilities and do my VPNs from there. That takes some load off of my server and puts it on dedicated hardware. Now, if you are going to use your router as a VPN access device or a VPN server, you're going to have to make sure either it has to be directly connected to the internet, probably not a good idea, or you need to make sure that in your firewall, you open up ports to allow the right traffic through the VPN traffic through to your VPN server. If you don't, that's not going to function very well. Okay, so with those caveats in place, that honestly I don't like using the remote access service. I will try to find other solutions if at all possible. With those caveats in place, Windows Server does give you the capability of doing things like that. So we'll go ahead and this installation will finish. You'll see it cruising along here slowly, but it's working on it. This installation will finish. Um, remember, we only did the direct access and VPN. So in our next video, we'll talk about configuring a Windows Server as a VPN server. Remember that you need to be aware of the security implications. If there is another way to do it, if you can use it at the firewall, I actually prefer it there. But we will walk through a VPN configuration once this gets done in our next video. At this point for the installation, you can just kind of let it run and you will have the tools necessary for the VPN. Now remember, you also have those other functions, the web application proxy and the routing capability. If you want to add those in, you'll have to make sure that when you do your installation, you check those role services as well. Okay, we will let this run and we'll pick up configuring a VPN in our next video.